Hello, everyone. I wanted to first start with a quick show of hands. How many people here have experimented with computer vision? Wow, it's like almost half of the room. How many people here have effectively deployed computer vision models in production? Well, a significantly smaller number. So hopefully, by the end of my talk, you're going to be as excited as I am to deploy these models in production to solve actual business problems. My name is Francisco Uribe, and I'm the product lead for AutoML and the computer vision teams. In this talk, we will discuss Google's computer vision offerings. I'll first start by providing a quick introduction into our building blocks, and then I'll turn it over to three of our distinguished customers and partners to talk more about how they are using their technology, our technology. I wanted to first start by sharing the mission of our team. Our job is to enable developers and partners to build the next generation computer vision autonomy solutions. Whether you're an energy company seeking to detect rust or denting in a wind turbine, or whether you're an automaker seeking to integrate driver assistance into your vehicles, or a financial institution seeking to extract text from scanned documents, we want to provide you with a rich and high-quality set of building blocks for you to implement and assemble these autonomy solutions. And the way we do that is by packaging and putting at your fingerprint Google's state-of-the-art machine learning acceleration hardware, like cloud and edge TPUs, and more than a decade in state-of-the-art computer vision and machine perception research. So specifically, our team is part of the Cloud AI family of products, and we focus on three main areas. The first one, Vision API, and the second one, Video Intelligence API, help you understand your images and views respectively using the power of Google pre-trained models. And the third one, AutoML, is a suite of products that help you build high-quality machinery models with no machinery expertise required. Let's first start with the Vision API. The Vision API helps you understand your images using Google pre-trained models. You can use this API to extract value from your images, extract content, and then integrate this content into your applications. Vision API has a rich set of features for you to understand your images, ranging from content annotation, OCR, all the way to content moderation. But since the last GCP Next, I'm excited to introduce four key new capabilities. The first one, handwriting OCR, helps you extract handwritten text from your documents. The second one, object localizer, helps you extract not only the presence, but the actual coordinates of objects in your images. And the third one, web detection, helps you extract entities and similar images from the web, leveraging the power of Google Search. And the fourth one, product search, helps retailers integrate visual search into their mobile and web applications. In the next few slides, I'll provide three example solutions that customers are assembling with our technology. In the first one, customers are combining the power of Vision API content annotation features with PubSub and App Engine to index their images at scale and be able to query them using their, their rich metadata. Media Corporation is using this to target their content and find the right media as assets for the next production or media campaign. Financial institutions are using this to find text in a large set of scanned documents. And even retailers are using this to find products simply using visual features. The second one, customers are combining the power of Vision API OCR in our natural language APIs to be able to classify and extract structured information from their scanned documents. Companies are using this to digitize their content and enable new workflows and business processes downstream. And in the last one, retailers are using our APIs 
to build visual search applications. And the way they are doing that is by first detecting different types of products, like sneakers, pants, or a t-shirt, using our object localizer API, and then sending those crops to the product search API to retrieve the exact SKU of that product in a customer's catalog. So in a nutshell, you can assemble all these solutions using our vision API with no machine learning expertise required. Now switching gears, I wanted to talk about the Video Intelligence API. This API helps you annotate and understand your videos at scale in a short period of time. You can think of Video Intelligence API as Vision API, but heavily optimized for videos, meaning we leverage the temporal component of videos. But as Vision API, Video Intelligence API has features for content annotation, like label detection, and content moderation, like safe search, but it also has additional video-specific features, like shot change detection. Media and entertainment companies are using this to tag vast, vast databases of video footage. Advertising companies are using this to determine the right place in time where to place contextual ads in their video streams. And companies are also using this to extract rich metadata from their videos to enhance the quality of the recommendation engines. So independent of the uses of our customers, we're very excited about what they are doing with our technology. But this is just the beginning. In the next few weeks, we'll be introducing key new capabilities that are going to enhance our video intelligence capabilities even further. So please stay tuned. Now, if the video intelligence API or the vision API do not meet your needs because your data belongs to a specific domain or because you want us to add additional support for your own concepts, we introduce AutoML. AutoML is a suite of products that helps you build high-quality machine learning models for your own data and for your own use case with no machine learning expertise required. We all know machine learning is hard. Whenever you're confronted with a machine learning challenge, you have to determine what is the right set of data preprocessing techniques to use, which models should you use. If you're using deep learning, you need to determine which architecture to use or which set of hyperparameters to pick. And after you're done training your model, you need to determine what is the right serving infrastructure to serve these models at scale and meeting whatever latency requirements you may have. This entire process is very time consuming. It requires a lot of money because training a lot of these models takes a lot of uh, computational resources and at the same time require significant machine learning expertise. So that's the reason why we introduced AutoML, to help you automate the most complex, hardest steps in building a machine learning model. And this way, you can focus on higher value activities like collecting the right uh, data and defining the right set of business objectives for your problem. And all of this without having to compromise on machine learning quality. So in a nutshell, AutoML helps you build high quality machine learning models for your own data. And after you train a model, we deploy this model on an API easy to use that you can use to run predictions on the rest of your data set. Yesterday, Feife introduced two new AutoML products, AutoML Natural Language and AutoML Translate. But the most relevant AutoML for this particular session is AutoML Vision that helps to build high-quality image classification models. So for example, let's imagine that you're a retailer trying to classify different types of products into your own set of categories. All you have to do is provide a, a series of examples of handbags, shoes, and hats, and AutoML does the magic behind the scenes to produce a model that then you can later use to tag the rest of your product catalog. Now, how does AutoML work behind the scenes? Behind the scenes, AutoML uses AI to build AI. Every time you pass your data to AutoML, an AI agent builds a high-quality deep learning model with optimal architecture and set of hyperparameters to solve your particular business need. Now, to test this technology, we run AutoML on ImageNet, arguably the most popular and heavily studied data scientist data set. And AutoML 
managed to produce new state-of-the-art results on this data set. And what's even more remarkable is the fact that because these models are produced by AI, it can optimally trade off the model size and the accuracy of these models, something that's crucial to deploy these models on the edge. So in a nutshell, AutoML is a product for citizen data scientists, developers, to build high-quality models and with a great user experience. And to illustrate the point about the user experience, I wanted to quickly show you guys a demo of AutoML. Let's imagine that we are all meteorologists trying to classify photos of the sky into um, different types of clouds, which I recently learned is actually a good predictor of future weather events. So if I'm confronted with this problem, all I will have to do is collect a few example images for each one of these different types of clouds, and then open AutoML, open AutoML and click on a new data set. And let's say I want to create clouds three, and here I'm offered two different options to upload my data. I can either upload them from my local hard drive in a zip file or by pointing out a Google Cloud Storage packet. But since I have already uploaded a Clouds data set, I'm going to go back to the data set section and pick Clouds 2 that has around 1,800 images. Somebody in our team actually <laughs> tagged these photos. And here you can see all the different steps required to build a model, like ranging from images all the way to prediction. And the first part, images, has a Google Photos-like UI for you to manage your images. Here you can curate your labels and your Im and the image labels. And we show you your label distribution so you can determine how to properly balance your data set. So after you're done curating your, your training data set, you can move to the next step, train. And here we show all the different models that you have already trained with their corresponding precision and recall values. If you want to train a new model, all you have to do is click Train New Model, and that's it. Now, if I want to learn more about the performance of one particular model, all I have to do is click on See Evaluation. And here, we show more advanced metrics, like the precision and recall uh, graphs PR and PR curves. And at the same time, you can tweak the score threshold for you to determine the ideal trade-off between precision and recall of your particular business use case. And scrolling down, you can see the confusion matrix that shows the labels that the model is, is confusing. So for instance, you can see that the model is confusing all the cumulus labels with serious labels around 23.8% of the time. So if you click on that cell, we show you example images that the model is, is confusing. So you can make a, a more guided or educated guess about which additional images to upload to improve the quality of the model at these decision boundaries. So after you're done curating your data set and you have built a model that you're happy with, you can go to the Predict tab. And here we show different options how to query your model with a simple REST API script or a Python script. But if you're in a rush, you, you can simply upload an image from your hard drive. Here I'm going to test uploading an image. And voila, you can see that the model accurately predicted this is a cumulus label. Now, switching back to the slides, so to wrap up my session, I wanted to announce that since we launched our ML, we've had more than 18,000 signups. So we're extremely humble by our traction. Our customers' use cases span multiple verticals, ranging from medical imaging to retailers tagging product images, all the way to waste management corporations using AutoML to sort out different types of trash, like landfill, compost, or recycling. But independent of the use cases, independent of, of the verticals and the size of our customers, we're extremely happy about what they are doing with our technology. And on that note, I wanted to introduce Eli, come to stage. 
Um, he's the head of data science at Literati. I'm Eli. I'm the data scientist at Literati. We are a platform that empowers people in cleaning the planet. Each year, 14 billion pounds of trash flow into our oceans. Four trillion cigarettes are thrown on the ground. 11 billion is spent in cleaning it up in US alone. Litter destroys the environment, kills wildlife, poisons our food system, yet strangely, there's no data. So we built an app. Using our app, each user can take a picture of litter, say a Starbucks or a Burger King cup, tag it, and that then dispose of it. The data that we collect from each user is their username, what they picked up, a geotag tells us where, and a timestamp tells us when. And in turn, we are building the global database for litter, the first of its kind, and ultimately, a litter-free planet. What we understand is the data we collect and its integrity is critical. The data we collect is used by cities, nonprofit organizations, brands, and schools across the world. For example, in San Francisco, our data generates annual tax revenue of $4 million. But we understand the problem we are trying to solve is complex. So we've partnered up with Google's AutoML team. And what it helps us do is makes the process, make the process, as easy as possible for our users so that they can pick up more litter and our data smarter. So what AutoML does, it takes the user images and in the back end performs image recognition. This, hel this helps us in our data integrity. This is just a sample of examples of user images that AutoML has tagged in the back end with great results. Hands down for us, at Literati, Google's AutoML has proved to be powerful, easy to use with a robust process flow. Moving forward, we want to take AutoML from the back end and put it in use each user app to improve the user tagging. So user will still take a picture, AutoML will tag it in their app, and then our user will help us improve our litter database by going in and adding additional tags, say a local brand of beer or Coca-Cola uh, or cola or candy. And guess what? Our literati story is spreading. We have some amazing partners with United Nations being the most recent. And we are just getting started. Thank you so much for letting me share. That's awesome. Thanks a lot, Eli. So now, I wanted to introduce you to Sainsha, data scientists at OpenTor, to talk about their experience using AutoML. Thanks, Francisco. So guys, I'm Zane Shaw from the data science team at OpenDoor. And you may be wondering, what is OpenDoor? Well, our mission is to empower everyone with the freedom to move. What that means is, instead of doing a bunch of repairs, uh, repairs on your home, working with an agent to list your home, uh, having random people show up at odd hours of the day, instead you just go to our website, tell us a bit about your home, and we figure out from our data uh, what, we think it'll, uh, what we think it'll be able to sell for, and we make an offer to buy your house for that amount, an instant cash offer. Um, if you like our offer, you just sell it to us and relax. You don't have to do much at all. You can just move on with your life. Now, this may sound like a crazy pipe dream, but we've actually made a lot of progress so far. Um, people love what we're doing. Uh, this time last year, we were in three cities. Now we're in 10. Um, we've acquired 800,000 houses and put them on the market. Uh, we now spend about a billion dollars a year purchasing homes. And all these numbers are growing, and we're, we're expanding very quickly. 
Now, what does that experience look like? Well, you basically just go to our website, you tell us where you live, and from there we use our data to make more informed decisions. I can show you a bit of what it looks like. You go to our website, tell us where you live, like I said, and through our process, you basically just give us some information that we might not automatically have, and you tell us like what's going on inside your home. From this, we can dynamically calculate how much we think we're going to be able to sell the home for, and if you like what we offer, you can basically just sell your home to us uh, for that amount and relax. Um, you can also investigate what our prediction was and how we came to that amount, um, and it's a, it's a very easy experience there. Now, from the data science team at Open Door, the sorts of problems that I deal with are pretty crucial to the business. Um, problems we deal with are like accurately valuing homes, totally sight unseen. You just go to our website and tell us a bit and we have to figure out actually what it's going to sell for. Um, this is important for us to actually do this at scale. Um, we need to predict how long it'll take to sell and we need to analyze market dynamics to correctly understand what's going on in the market and optimally price the homes. Now, like I said, one of our primary challenges is valuing someone's home totally sight unseen. As you can see here, these two homes, they might look very similar on paper, but um, in person it's quite clear that the home on the left is not very nice. Um, so how do we know this? Well, we can actually figure out from uh, photos, for example, how nice the home is. There are, there are a bunch of things that are maybe not what drives the value of the home, but definitely are strong indicators that we've isolated. There are mostly proxy features, things like if you have stainless steel appliances, that's a pretty good indicator. If you have granite countertops, that's a pretty good indicator. Brand new cabinets, uh, separate tub and shower in your bathroom, things like that. Now, like you saw in the flow, we get some data from our sellers. They tell us exactly a lot of the structured information, like whether they have granite countertops. But for the historical transactions that we train our models on, uh, we don't get that at all. We get the square footage, number of bathrooms, maybe how many stories the home has, and where it's located, but none of this information that we really need. So that's where computer vision comes in. From the historical transactions, we don't have the structured data, but we do have photos. So we can look at the photos of the home, we can figure out whether, it's, uh, whether it has an upgraded kitchen, whether it has a nice bathroom, and we can use that to better inform our decisions. But the problem there is that's actually pretty time consuming and difficult. So that's me on the right there. Uh, in a past life, I've spent weeks poring over filter visualizations from convolutional neural networks to understand what was going on and improve the performance. But it's a lot of work and sometimes it doesn't even work super well and it takes way too long. So that's where AutoML comes in. Basically all we had to do in order to uh, um, test this use case is get a bunch of labels in a spreadsheet, upload them to uh, Google Cloud AutoML, and from there we get a perfectly, uh, like very well accurate model um, that predicts exactly what we want. In this case, whether a kitchen has stainless steel appliances or not, with basically zero work. What's next for us? Well, we wanna get more labels. Um, the more we know about a home, the better, and so th this means things like uh, features about the bathrooms, living rooms, backyards, and other image resources as well. AutoML is very flexible, and so we can look at aerial imagery, different rooms, even street view images to understand what a home looks like from the outside. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Zane. And now we have Rob Monroe at uh, figure, CDO of Figure 8 to talk about our human labeling partnership. All right. Thank you, Francisco. Uh, so something that all of these AutoML use cases have in common, uh, which is different from a lot of the, the existing off-the-shelf APIs uh, in GCP, is that they rely on human labeled data. Uh, so it's humans who are going in and saying this label applies to this image, uh, and then that uh, powers the, the machine learning uh, to do this at scale. Uh, so uh, Figure 8 is a company that provides software uh, to label your data for machine learning. Uh, so we're the most widely used software uh, for GCP customers today. Um, and it was delightful to find out as we're organizing this that Open Door is actually one of our customers. Uh, so those images that you saw in the, uh, the previous presentation are ones uh, that our workforce labeled for them. And uh, you can find uh, this use case on our website. Uh, so if you, if you need to have humans label data uh, for machine learning, uh, there's a number of things that, that you need 
to, to think carefully about. Uh, first of all, how can you make this process as efficient as possible? So how can you have a smart interface that allows someone to create the, those right labels uh, as quickly as possible and remove a lot of the redundancy? Uh, secondly, you need to think about who is the right workforce for this. Um, uh, if you have a volume of, of labels where you can't put your data scientists on this manual task, um, then you might want to, to reach out um, and use uh, crowdsource or professional labels, uh, labelers. And, and so we manage a marketplace of about 100,000 people um, who regularly annotate data for all kinds of different information. Uh, finally, you want good machine learning integration. Uh, so you want to be able to take your human labeled data, uh, put it into your AutoML models, um, and then also quickly iterate, uh, iterate as you need to, to add more data. Uh, so one particular use case I'm looking at, uh, which I'll speak about here, uh, takes us from uh, the first presentation, was, uh, which was about computer vision across the entire world. Uh, the second presentation, which was about computer vision for your home, uh, I'm going to go inside your home, uh, specifically into your closets, and talk about your shoes. Uh, so who here is familiar with WGSN? Anyone? Okay. Uh, look around at the people with their hands up next to you. They are the best dressed people in this room. Uh, so, um, I just saw a bunch of extra hands go up. <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, WGSN are a company that uh, predicts fashion trends. Um, one very important part of making this forecast is to see what is currently uh, being sold uh, across a very large number of different retailers' websites. Uh, and as you can imagine, these trends are much more fine-grained than is it just shoes versus shirts versus dresses. Um, it's about very specific types um, and stylings um, uh, within these different uh, pieces of clothing. Uh, so you can so see in this example here, um, this is something that the human might look at. Okay, is this a shoe? Yes, it is. Uh, what kind of shoe is it? So is it, is it a heel or is it a flat shoe? Uh, and so you can see that the annotator here, um, the, the human creating this annotation, uh, they can see an example of what a flat versus a heel is with a text description of that in line, allowing them to, to quickly use those instructions to, to make the right decision. Uh, similarly here, uh, if they selected a boot, uh, this is a, a categorical distinction between a, a lace-up boot um, and a, and a slip-on boot. Um, uh, so this kind of interface is one of the ways in which uh, you're able to get uh, high-quality training data because you know that uh, even if it's not someone doing the labeling that you're interacting directly with, uh, you're able to provide them uh, with the, uh, the right instructions. Uh, and so, once these uh, data points have all been labeled according to their categories, you can take this information, automatically put it into AutoML, and have this process run at scale. Uh, one of the nice features of AutoML uh, is that it'll, it'll tell you the confidence of each prediction, um, and it has a really good correlation between confidence and accuracy. Uh, so what this means uh, for, for someone like WGSN or someone with a similar use case is that they can use AutoML uh, to automate everything that they know is correct by machine learning, um, and then for those remaining items, because they need to get 100% accuracy, uh, they can put those back to humans for review. Uh, so minimizing that human part and optimizing uh, as much as they can uh, so that they can have these accurate uh, forecasts. Uh, so this is what the figure eight platform looks like to do this. I'm not going to go into to all the details here, just a couple of points. Uh, so in addition to having uh, configurable interfaces uh, that allows you to, to set these instructions correctly, uh, there are a number of quality controls. Uh, so, for example, you can set uh, which workforces work on this task. Uh, so, we work with um, a, a lot of retail companies. So, eBay that you saw earlier as an AutoML customer is also someone that we do uh, image labeling for. And so, the same people who have learned about different fashions through eBay uh, can also be working on, on your particular task. Um, you can automatically give the task to multiple people, so you're getting a certain level of agreement for items that might be ambiguous. Uh, and you can also use our, our patented system for embedding test questions. So if there are some items which you already know the labeled answers, uh, they can be hidden along the way, um, and thereby you're evaluating the accuracy of every single person that's working on this platform. Uh, and so we'll often have tens of thousands of people working in, in parallel um, uh, for a single client's use case, and it's this kind of technology that enables you to scale to that kind of workforce very seamlessly. Uh, the, the final thing which uh, is uh, very important is making this annotation uh, as accurate as possible. And this is somewhere where you can combine machine learning. And this is best demonstrated uh, as a video rather than, uh, rather than me talking. Uh, so you can see here machine-assisted video annotation uh, of two methods side by side, the bottom being the one that uh, you can use in our platform. So you can imagine, right, if you have you know, 30 frames a second times 10 seconds, uh, that's 300 frames. 
uh, times 20 objects, 6,000 individual objects that you might want to identify. Uh, so what we uh, have in our system is a way that these objects are automatically tracked uh, between frames, still allowing that human annotator to review every single one um, and only make the update, the correction, or the deletion uh, when the machine learning has gotten this wrong. And so in this particular use case, you can see we're about 25 to 30 times faster uh, with no loss of accuracy. And, and we'll see this be up to 100 times faster for um, a lot of our customers. Uh, so what that means is that uh, the human component of creating data could be reduced to 1%, um, or you could annotate 100 times more data, or um, uh, apply 100 times more use cases uh, uh, for that budget. Um, and this could be either if you're using the, the workforce in our marketplace or uh, the efficiency gains that you're getting if you're bringing your, your own workforce uh, to this particular task. So uh, we're really proud to announce today um, uh, the Figure 8 and Google Cloud Partnership uh, for AutoML uh, so that anyone using AutoML uh, can take advantage of the Figure 8 annotation platform. Uh, so there's four particular components to this. A customizable annotation template, uh, so that same interface that you saw uh, for uh, classifying types of clothes can be used for any kind of computer vision task, and you can use both um, our inbuilt um, uh, workflows and uh, JavaScript to customize that as much as you like to our use case. Uh, assign consultants. Um, so if you're new to, to trying to get quality training data from a distributed human workforce, uh, our consultants can help you with that. Uh, human labeling, uh, so like I said, access to the, the 100,000 people in our marketplace, uh, both crowdsourced workers and uh, professionals that you can interact with directly um, and get paid by the hour. Um, and quality control, uh, the three different quality control methods that um, I spoke about today. And so I'd love to, to hand this back over to Francisco, um, who can uh, talk more about this partnership. Thanks a lot, Rob. And to wrap up, I wanted to invite you to learn more about our products at cloud.google.com slash vision and cloud.google.com slash video dash intelligence. Second, in a topic that, that requires a session on its own, at Google, we are committed to the responsible use of AI. And as a first step, our team put together a guide to help AutoML customers detect and potentially mitigate the bias in the data sets and models. So if you want to learn more about that guide, you can go to cloud.google.com slash inclusive ML. It's important to note that this is a live document, and we're really eager to hear your feedback. So, so please stay in touch. And last but not least, I wanted to invite you to participate in a limited time offer, exclusive for the, the members of this audience. We are offering two hours free of machine learning and fairness consultation, including free Dawson annotations. If you want to participate in this offer, you can go to www.figure-8.com slash AutoML. And all you have to do is provide your contact information, say that you came to this, um, this session, and then uh, provide a quick overview of your use case. And then uh, somebody in our team will reach out to you shortly. So with that, I wanted to thank you.